G4's holiday hit list. I'm Greg Grunberg, the only actor in Hollywood with four G's in my name. Count them. Now, every year, there are games, right? And, and there are games. Well, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to listen to every single word that I have to say the next 90 minutes as I take you through the list of all of the amazing games that you absolutely have to get this holiday season. If you succeed, you'll be rewarded with days, weeks, months, maybe even years of, of game-playing bliss. If you fail, well, let's just say I'm not going to be responsible for any post-holiday depression. Now, there's nothing like taking your mind off the real world by watching a good action flick. And the same can be said for video games. So let's start by taking a look at the action-adventure games that you'll be begging for this year. While Laura Croft may have set the table for a video game explosion, Tommy Versetti broke into the freaking house and turned that table on its side. All right, Grand Theft Auto 3 carjacked PS2 fans in 2001, while 2002's Vice City took things to a whole new level. Now both games are available and coming to Xbox and PS2 in a hefty new package. Well, Grand Theft Auto going to the Xbox is a surprise because we thought that Sony would have had them locked up, but there's any franchise that they wouldn't let go. It was that. Well, if you're an Xbox owner and you haven't played the Grand Theft Autos before, this is the great, great game. You're basically getting two games for the price of one. You're getting Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City. It's a big deal, though, for Xbox owners because, you know, here is the biggest franchise in the entertainment industry. Basically, you have two of the best games ever made in one package. Now, I know it's weird because it's kind of like coming a year late, but um, Xbox owners have this sort of snobbery about it where they want to play the best version of the game possible, and I think, you know, this version of the game will be the best version of consoles, um, you know, with a customized soundtrack and better graphics. You know, for those who haven't ever tried it, to get both games in one shot is a great deal. Tommy Versetti may be a badass, but Nick Kang is a badass with a law on his side. Well, sort of. In true crime, Streets of L.A., you'll play the role of Kang, a rogue elite operations officer, considers using excessive force and causing massive property damage perks of the job. And what really makes true crime cool is that the streets of L.A. have been painstakingly recreated using satellite photos and GPS data so you can actually have the freedom to bust bad guys from the Hollywood Hills to South Central. If fun in the sun of California isn't your thing, well, maybe, maybe you prefer the sun and sand of Persia where you can take advantage of the sands of time to freeze your enemies. Of course, you'll have to be playing the game Prince of Persia Sands of Time to do that. Okay, Prince of Persia, well, that's an easy game. I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's been one of the best games of the, of the holiday season. Prince of Persia brings you back to the time where you played uh, either Tomb Raider for the first time. Um, it's an adventure which sort of opens up your mind to an idea of what a 3D adventure can be. And now, you know, playing it and just feeling how ugly tra the transition from an old school PC to a new console game, they just kind of stepped up visually. It's just in the combat, it's just so stellar with, you know, the slow time motion or speed things up. It plays like you're playing a movie. And it actually, instead of actually watching some story unfold, you're actually in the middle of it. So you don't watch a dialogue for 10 minutes. You really feel like you're in the action. The crux this time is you control time itself. So you'd be fighting bad guys and you can, if you mess up in your attack, you can rewind the battle and try it a different way. This isn't the Prince of Persia I knew. On the lighter side, there's Ratchet and Clank Going Commando, the follow-up to last year's platforming extravaganza. Going Commando features RPG-style character development in a brand new world that's one and a half times bigger than the original. You gotta check this out. Ratchet and Clank Going Commando is one of the best platform game I've played this year so far. It's a really fun hop and bop adventure. Um, that takes things to an entirely different level. The original Ratchet and Clank came out last fall, and this new sequel, Ratchet and Clank Going Commando, is like less than a year afterwards, which is a really short time for a sequel. It is a huge improvement. They've added lots of new moves, 30 new weapons, 20 new worlds. Having um, you know simple additions made to the shooting engine, like the strafe buttons, that uh, give it more of a uh, kind of third-person um, shooter feel. Uh, I think it's better than Jack 2, it's better than most games I've seen recently, and it's just fun because it gives you a lot of guns, and who doesn't like guns? It's long, it's challenging, it's clever, it's funny. It's the best platformer this year, by far. 
The folks at Planet Moon Studios have always been a creative bunch. Mm -hmm. But they have really topped themselves this year with Armed and Dangerous, a game that introduces the idea of a gun that shoots sharks, which I think we can all agree is way overdue. The barrage of new and often hilarious weapons, like the topsy-turvy bomb that literally turned the world upside down, makes this self-described action-action game one to look out for. The most important weapon in this next game isn't a gun at all, it's a camera. And in Beyond Good and Evil, you want to use that camera as much as you can if you expect to take down the man and his minions. Beyond Good and Evil is uh, the new game from uh, Michelle Ancel. And um, it's got a really cool style to it. I think a lot of people are going to really want to check out the new character, Jade, and see what she's all about. Your character walks softly and carries a big stick and uh, gets to one not sneaking around, gets into fights, and, and is pretty proficient in it. Cool. Well, it has a talking pig. Who could possibly be interested in that kind of thing? She's got a, a pig for an assistant, which uh, should be kind of fun. <laughs> for me. You've got the sort of elements of uh, stealth where you're sneaking around these sort of government uh, uh, installations and trying to get uh, evidence that has uh, this sort of constant feeling of exploration. She has a camera that she uses that's like one of her abilities. The Young and Evil is a really neat game because it has so many different elements to it and all of them come together really, really nicely. In the salad days of arcades back in the early to mid 80s, few companies dominated like Midway. With its eclectic roster of titles ranging from Smash TV to Satan's Hollow, arcade addicts were never at a loss for Midway games. And now, Midway is bringing more than 20 of its all-time greats to consoles with Midway arcade treasures. A disc that's jam-packed with everything from Joust to Robotron to 720. So save those quarters for your laundry and create your own arcade with Midway arcade treasures. Oh, life would be just so wonderful if you could make a list of all the games that you really want and then come holiday time, you knew that when you opened up those gifts, those games would be in there. But life doesn't work that way. We've all got the uncle with the bad toupee, the bad breath, the wardrobe from 1978 who refuses to spend more than $25 on a gift. So go down to the basement, wake him up, take his toupee off, lick your hand, smack him real hard because this next segment is for him. Great stocking stuffers would be games that people may not know to buy because they're not heavily hyped. You know, they're not necessarily the Final Fantasies or Metal Gears or Halos of the world. I think a great stocking stuffer would be Virtual Fighter 4 Evo, which was bargain price to begin with. I think it's twenty dollars. It has a very sophisticated fighting game quest mode, but it also has a tutorial that will teach you everything you need to know about fighting games, and you'll be able to. Maybe not compete with the best, but at least you'll understand what they're talking about. Uh, if you want to go back a couple of years, if you missed Eco, you better play Eco. But it is one of the greatest uh, action puzzle games ever made. Uh, like I can think of one, there's a Game Boy Advance game that I thought was just incredible. It's called WarioWare, and it's this weird collection of little mini games that all take like three seconds each so it seems crazy like why would i play a game for three seconds but they just keep throwing them at you over and over again and a lot of people just didn't get it because it's so out there well i think a great stocking stuffer would be a game boy advanced st because it's small enough to fit in your stocking and it, your library of games is unbelievable and now with the light and being backlit you know you can finally see your games we need to take a break. I have to go pee-pee. But when we come back, we're going to take a look at the game that isn't of this earth, 